from the prior times equipment, we had 600,000. Then we have to look for the stuff that was added or taken away. In this problem, the only thing happened was equipment that was added. It was all for cash. That's why I'm looking at the cash budget in order to get that. If we financed it and whatnot, we'd have to think about find how much equipment we uh, had purchased, whether it was financed or not. In this case, we had the 600,000. We had one purchase through this time period for cash of the, of the 130. That gives us the total equipment, 730,000. Then we have the accumulated depreciation, the stuff we're going to reduce the equipment by. Once again, we're going to take the balance sheet from the last period. So last period's uh, balance sheet had accumulated depreciation, 150,000. And we have the budgeted uh, overhead budget gave us 21,000 a month or 63,000 on the quarter. So the 150,000 plus the 63,000 in accumulated depreciation gives us this 213,000. So then if we take the uh, 730,000 minus the 213,000, we have a book value of the equipment of uh, 517,000. Then we're gonna have the total assets, total assets being the outer column. So the outer column of current assets, 783,40 plus the 517, gives us the $1,300,040. Then we have the liabilities and equity we're gonna move on to, starting with the current liabilities. First one being accounts payable. We're gonna go through a similar calculation that we did with the receivable in order to figure out what is in there. Now, this is gonna be a bit more simplified because of the way this particular problem was set up. We're basically left with, in the receivable, this number here, the September. And, but let's go through the calculation a bit in the long way just so we can see how this calculation would work and how you could see it applied to a different type of setup. In this setup, we're saying that we're going to purchase everything on account and then pay for everything the following month. So if we think about this, we're going to say, okay, then that means that there's 200500 That's what we started off in accounts payable. That's what was in there at the end of last month. That's what's in there at the beginning of this month. And then we're going to say, okay, then we had purchases of raw materials. Remember, the assumption is that we purchased all of it on account. So we purchased everything on account. In this case, for the entire month, we purchased 611474 all of it on account. So that would increase the accounts payable. Then we have to think about how much payments for raw material. How much did we pay? And the assumption is that we pay uh, the month following. We paid for the full previous month the month following. So that means that the amount we paid uh, in in August, we paid the 200,005. And then uh, in September, sorry, in July, we paid the 200,005 that we that we purchased the month before. And then uh, and then in August, we paid the 207. And then in September, we paid this 212 for the purchases that leaves us then of course, with this number. So if we add up the 200,005 plus the 207, 224 plus the 212, 625, we've come up with the 191, uh, I'm sorry, we come up with the 62349. And if we then say, let's take out the calculator and actually do the calculation here. So then if we take the 200,500 we started with plus the 611474 minus uh what we paid 620 349 we're going to end up with the 191 625 here and of course that is the purchases that we made in september so that's why this one happened to wind up of course the purchases that we are left in september because we're going to pay them all off in the following month all right so if we pull that over there's the 191 625 here next we have the short-term loan payable 8160 that remember we're going to take from our cash flow statement because that loan is fluctuating it's kind of like a line of credit we needed that in order to get to our minimum balance of this forty thousand in cash and then we have the income tax payable that's going to come from the income statement so that's going to be down here on the income statement we had to calculate the income tax payable that is what's going to be owed for income taxes on the balance sheet at the end of this time period then we have the uh, total current liabilities that's going to be, of course, this number plus this number plus this number will give us the total current liabilities. Then we have the long-term note payable. 
That doesn't change according in this particular problem. That was the 500,000 at the beginning of the time frame. We're paying off interest only during this time period, during this quarter. Therefore, the principal does not go down. So we're still at the 500,000. And now we're going to move to the equity section where we're going to have the retained earnings. So we'll do the calculation for retained earnings, which will be the beginning retained earnings, which we will get from the last time's uh, balance sheet. So last period balance sheet, ending retained earnings for last periods, beginning retained earnings for this period. We're going to add to that the net income, which we will, of course, get from the income statement. So there's income. We're going to add that to the retained earnings. Then we're going to subtract that from that, the dividends that we paid out. Now, we recorded this in the statement of uh, cash, uh, in, in the cash budget, So, uh, but I won't go back there. So that's where that 10000 is coming from. We budgeted the amount that we're going to pay out, and that will give us the retained earnings. So we've got the 208788 plus the income 43204 minus the 10000 dividends gives us the ending retained earnings of 241992, and that's going to be this item here. Then we're going to have the total stockholders' equity, which will be the 335,000 plus the 241,992, gives us the 576,992. And if we then add up the total liabilities and equity, here's the current uh, liabilities plus the note plus the total equity. So these three are adding up to the 576,009. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> these three adding up to the 1,300,040. And of course, the total liabilities and equity will then equal the total assets. And so we are in balance in our budgeted balance sheet.